as I said, because I have marked some things private, when you make a bookmark, you have the option to share it or not share it. There are certain things in here that I have remained, um, that I've marked as private. So when I log into my account, I see them. But if you went to my account, you would not see them. And those tend to be things that are personal, that um, might be, for instance, I'm involved with the Sunday school at my church, and I don't necessarily want to share that private part of my life with the rest of the world. And so when I've looked up some um, activities and websites and things to use in Sunday school, those are things that I typically mark as private. Like you can see this one here, the printable Bible activities is marked with a, a padlock. It's a private. This is a receipt from an online order, and I wanted to bookmark it so that I could track, because I can go back and track my order, but I don't need to share that with the world either. So that's marked as private. Um, my son, who is, although is 32, um, still sends me links for, here's my Christmas list, and it's links to this site and that site and different things that he wants. Again, that doesn't need to be shared with the world unless the world is interested in providing some Christmas gifts for my son. So those kinds of things I mark as private. The other thing I tend to mark as private is if I have a login for something. Um, for instance, um, I work for BOCES and we have a administrative side to the BOCES website that lets us get in and and sort of create blogs and check on our professional development courses and how many people are signed up and so on and so forth. Well, those are our web links that I frequently forget, so I have them bookmarked, and but I've also marked them private because they're not for other people to use to log in. Now, you if I left it public, it really wouldn't matter because you wouldn't have a login, so you could get to the site to the login screen, but you wouldn't be able to get in. But just as an added level of security, and because they really don't serve any interest um, for anybody else, I do mark those things as private as well. Now, when you come into um, mine or somebody else's, like I said, you'll notice that here's the title of the website. And if I wanted to go to that website, I would just simply click on it. Uh, when I'm logged into my account, you can also see um, that I have some additional choices of things here. I have, let me zoom in on that a little bit. I have an edit button, so if I needed to get back in here to change the title or add a description, or I thought, oh, I left that public and I would rather make it private or vice versa, I can click edit and that lets me come in and edit. So let me click that and you can see that um, what I put in was that I had the URL and the title. I didn't put in any notes. You can put in a description or notes to help you remember what that website was or what it was good for or why you wanted to mark it. Um, and here are the tags that I've assigned to that website. I could come back in here and add additional tags or delete tags. Um, if I wanted to send this bookmark to somebody to share, I might say, oh, you know, um, this teacher that I'm working with, she might really like that. And I know that she's on Delicious, so if I have her the name of her Delicious account, I could send the bookmark to her. Um, and right down here is where you see I could mark it as private. Let me zoom out on that a little bit. When I f have finished editing, I would just click the Save button over here. If I thought, well, you know, I really wasn't all that interested in that website and I've never used it and I really don't want it or I put in something wrong, the link doesn't work anymore, I also have a delete button so that I could delete that and take it out. Anything I've marked private, like this one that's locked, I also have a share button. So if I marked it private and then changed my mind and wanted to make it public, I would click the share button and that would let me um, unprivatize it, if you will. I'm not sure that's a word, but anyway. So also over here you'll see the tags that I used for that particular bookmark. And as we as I said on the front page, this is how many other people have marked, have also bookmarked that on Delicious. So that number helps me in several ways. It 
sometimes if I'm not sure about the validity of a site, if I see that lots of people have bookmarked it, not always, but sometimes it gives me an idea that, well, maybe this is a worthwhile site. Maybe this is a true site. Um, because a lot of people have bookmarked it. A lot of people are going to it. Now, that's not foolproof, but it, it helps me um, in terms of that. Also, if I look at this and I say, um, for instance, let me come down here to um, Audacity Tutorial for Podcasters. Well, I see that, first of all, lots of people have bookmarked it. If I click on that, here are all of the 100 or 1,000, whatever it was. Here are all the different people that have bookmarked it. Now, when I look at what their tags are, uh, for instance, Iris here, has bookmarked that, has tagged it with Audacity, Podcasting, Podcast, Podcast Tutorials. I might think, well, if she's got an interest in Audacity and, and podcasting, as she obviously does, and tutorials, she might have other resources, bookmarked other resources that I would also find useful. So I might click on Iris's name here. And now I am in looking at all of her bookmarks. And this is just her general list of 148 bookmarks. But if I look over here on the side in her tags, she's got a podcasting, podcasts, podcasting tags over here. So if I wanted to look at her podcasting links, I would just click on that tag and now it's sorted out of her podcasting links and I might find something here that I didn't know about that would be very useful to me. If I wanted specifically podcasting tutorials, you'll see up here, here's her username, here's the first kind of filter I put in, podcasting. Now I could add a second filter. I notice that she's got tutorials, so I could add tutorials. And now when I sort, it's going to sort for specifically podcasting tutorial sites that she's bookmarked. And she's got two of those. Here's the one that I have bookmarked, but here's another one that maybe I haven't seen that I might like to take a look at. So this is one way that this is social. It's interactive. It's collaborative. It lets me make other connections, find other resources, and so on. Now to get back to my own place, I'm just going to come up here to bookmarks and click my bookmarks, and I'm just going to go back to my own bookmarks, and here I am again. Okay. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, I have my... Um, here are all of my, here's my top 10 tags. So what this does is it takes the, the tags that you have used. Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better. These are the tags that I've used and most often my top 10. If I want to see all of my tags, I have 319 different tags. I can just click this triangle and now I'll get a list of all of my tags and the things that it, it'll show over here on the right how many book things I've bookmarked with that tag. Something that I won't get into a lot right now in this course is something called tag bundles. And that's kind of like taking a folder or a category and saying, you know, these tags belong in this category. Uh, for instance, I have a tag conferences. Well, these are specifically different conferences that I've been to and that I've tagged. So I often will tag the resources that all went to a certain conference, either because I'm presenting or because I'm attending. And so I can put those all together in one folder called conferences. I could individually click on a conference tag if I wanted to go to the things just for that conference. Or if I wanted, I couldn't remember what conference it was, I could click on the bundle name and then, let me scroll back out again, I'm sorted by the things that I marked at conferences. I think, well, it was at some conference. I don't remember which one, but I know it was at a conference. That helps me sort. 